Our next topic is going to be on acute tubular necrosis. Well, before we move forward, we have, I want to end, uh, explain to you that this is just another subset of a tubular interstitial disease. It's a beautiful story behind this. Now, what is acute tubular necrosis? Let's take a look at it. Acute, a very short amount of time. Tubules, here are the tubules. Remember those renal tubule cells I told you about? Yep, that's one of them. We're gonna talk about them in a minute. But now necrosis means they're dead. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they died. But what caused them to die? Yeah, that's what I need to talk about. Well, the definition of acute tubular necrosis is due to kidney severe hypoperfusion to the kidneys. Also with toxicity, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But if you have severe hypoperfusion to the kidney plus a toxic compound, you develop ischemia. Ischemia is decreased blood flow, no nutrients, no oxygen to the tubules. These tubules, they wanna be fed. Eventually will lead to what? Infarction. Infarction and eventually develop necrosis and they start to slouch off. So here's the story. Here's a cute looking renal tubule cell. It's always getting its nutrients every day. Food is coming in, it's eating up, it's got the oxygen, it's got the nutrients, it's feeling good, it's undergoing oxidative phosphorylation, it's got an ATP and they're cranking up and it's also working. That's a typical day for a renal tubule cell. However, one day they cut off the supply. There was a hypoperfusion state that happened in the body and all of a sudden, I don't have my food anymore. Yeah, initially, these patients are gonna develop some acute renal failure. But if this becomes persistent and become what? Severe. And they're still not getting any perfusion to the kidneys, guess what's going to happen? Oh, I don't get my food. It doesn't, can't really hang in there for so long. And then you get a toxic compound? Oh, that is some bad news. If you get some toxicity to it with it, Eventually, they're gonna become necrotic and they're gonna slouch off. Now, I've drawn a diagram to illustrate this simple thing, telling you how normal blood flow goes to the renal tubules. It's a sample of a tubule. However, if we cut off the perfusion, if we cut off the perfusion to the kidneys, guess what? These tubule cells are gonna start to slouch off and guess what's gonna form? We're gonna form this brown yucky stuff we call muddy brown cast. Well, what can cause severe hyperperfusion to the kidneys? Well, number one, if you just have heart cardiac surgery or you have sepsis, sepsis or you have cardiac surgery or even what? Aortic surgery. What kind of aortic surgery are we talking about? If you had a big aortic aneurysm ruptured and they had to replace this, what eventually happens is during the surgery, they have to clamp off uh, this top of the aorta and also clamp off the bottom so they can fix this area. During that period of time, you might get decreased perfusion to your kidneys. <gasps> that is some bad news. If you keep getting persistence, hyperperfusion, you're gonna become ischemia to the kidneys, you get renal insufficiency, eventually necrosis. If you become septic, you get systemic work, vasodilatations, all the blood vessels are so dilated, it decreases the perfusion to your kidneys because they're just rushing down, they're all floating down, nothing is getting perfused to the beautiful kidneys. Well, aside from sepsis, what about things that cause this are called hypotension, right? This will cause you to become hypotension. Well, you might say to me, wait a minute, I don't like it. Yeah, if that's just hypotension, if I have like heart failure or if I have a hemorrhage, I can develop the same thing. But in this case, it's persistent, it's constant, it's constant, it's not going away. If I have hyperperfusion and I replace back the fluid in your vasculature when you're hypotensive, oh, guess what? It reverses. Drugs. Oh, we drugs are we talking about? Oh, well, aminoglycosides. 
aminoglycosides like what? They're the mean glats, right? The gentamicin, neomycin, amikacin, tobramycin. These drugs are aminoglycosides. They're very nephrotoxic. Guess who else? Cisplatin. The guy that makes you deaf and also damages your kidneys. Yeah, it's nephrotoxic. What about the drug we use for patients with fungal infection? And for teracin B. The B is going to blow up your kidneys. Remember, amphotericin B, cisplatin, aminoglycosides, these are toxic to your kidneys. So if you have toxicity from a drug to, to your tubules, right, it's like you've got the drug squishing up and damaging your tubules, and on top of that, we're not getting any blood flow, like all of the blood supply has been cut off due to ischemia, right, because you have hypertension and you're having decreased blood flow right decrease blood flow and decrease perfusion to the kidneys this is going to cause your renal tubule cells to die and when they die they're going to slouch off it has nothing to do with your glomerulus the glomerulus are fine it's only the tubules now there's three phases for this renal tubule cells to develop and die and become necrotic See what happens, become toxic and you die. Well, so since there are three phases, what do you think is the first phase is gonna be? Well, they have hyperperfusion to the kidneys, right? So this is very acute onset. This is just new injury that's been happening. So this is called the prodromal phase. And this is basically at the acute phase of injury. Now, this is the, when the new onset renal failure is start to develop. Now, the second phase, since I'm having hyperperfusion to the kidneys, will I be able to pee? No. So if I don't pee, we call that what? Oligouria. By definition, it's usually less than what? 400 mLs in 24 hours. If you're not peeing up to 400 mLs in 24 hours, you're oligouric. Guess what? It gets worse. Now, if you're not making any urine at all, we call that anuric. At that point, you even make less than 100 mLs in 24 hours. That means, what does this mean? That means initially you had renal injury, or someone had, you had an acute renal failure, right, from hyperperfusion, but because it becomes more persistent, if I keep decreasing the amount of fluid going to my kidneys, to the glomerulus, I can't filter anything through the tubules. If nothing's getting to the tubules, nothing is coming out. That's how I develop oligouria. The last but not the least is the poly oliguric phase. Now, after these cells have not re received any blood flow for so long and the toxicity has been damaging the tubules, now when there's perfusion to the kidneys, we're going to develop something called polyuria, which is vigorous because at that point, Water that hasn't been what excreted now is just gonna pour down the drain and you're gonna have vigorous polyuria. But it's gonna come with what? Some yucky stuff called muddy brown cast. Because think about it, when all these cells die off and all the filtrations go through, you're just gonna wash all of them down and get it's just gonna come out and you're gonna peel this yucky looking brown muddy cast. That's necrotic tubules that have died. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a sudden loss. How are we going to make the diagnosis? Well, the way we're going to diagnose this issue or pathology, making the diagnosis, is we're always going to order what? I'll get urine, uh, renal function test, right? And check your BUN 
creatinine. It's usually 10 to 1. At the initial onset of renal failure. And it might sound like, wait a minute, initially you might get a ratio of 20 to 1 because when we have pre-renal azotemia, that's what we get, right? When you have pre-renal azotemia, your BUN to creatinine ratio is usually 20 to 1. It could be 40 to 2. That's usually what? The ratio. But as it gets persistently worse and the cells start to die off, what, what happens is the ratio becomes 10 to 1. Now, there are other key factors we need to know. Like, what will be your urine osmolality? What about phena? Remember phena? Fractional excretion of sodium. What percentage would that be? And last but not the least is the what? The urine sediment. What are we going to see in the urine sediment? Well, let's think of this. Let's think this through. If I'm damaging your renal tubules, if something is dead, it can't perform its function, right? If I can perform my function, will I be able to reabsorb uh, wh how much uh, sodium will I, uh, fractional excretion of sodium will be? Wouldn't it be very high? Because now sodium can be reabsorbed back into the body, so it's going to do what? Sodium is going to come out. When sodium come out, what's going to happen? A urine sodium. Check the amount of sodium in the urine. It's going to be greater than 40. That's going to be very high. That's telling you the, so the tubules are dead. The sodium is what? It's escaping. Normally what? We reabsorb it back into the body. Well, if I'm losing all the sodium, what's going to be the fractional excretion of my sodium? It's going to be greater than 1%. Why? Because I'm excreting all this what? Sodium. Because the tubers are not working. They usually what? Reabsorb it. If they reabsorb it, it should be less than 1. But because they are losing and they are dying, they're like, oh, they just look at the sodium. Like, Hi, sodium. Mm. And the sodium just walks past them and they don't touch it. They don't touch it. Fraction excretion of sodium is what? Greater than 1%. And urine sodium is what? Greater than 40. Well, if the cells are dead, when water is starting, you know, Mr. Water, H2O, is walking down the street. He sees Mr. Sodium running down the street. He's like, oh, hold, hold on, sodium, let me catch up. He catches up with the water and the sodium. And guess, since the tubers are like, oh, we're pretty much dead. We'll meet you guys outside also. Well, guess what? The urine osmolality is going to be what? It's going to be really, really low. It's going to be less than 350. Because the renal tubules normally concentrate your urine. Now they can't because they're dead. They're like, hmm, guess what? I'm dead. I'm going to meet you guys outside. And when the renal tubes start to break off, they're going to form something we call muddy brown cast. Muddy brown cast. So this makes absolute sense. Cells are dead. Everything walking by them, they're following them. So it's like, you know what? We're going to just move out. We're moving out. Well, muddy brown cast comes out. Sodium that's normally supposed to be reabsorbed. Like, well, if that's the guy that's supposed to reabsorb me and he's not doing his job, I'm just going to follow wherever he's going. What I said, hmm, wait a minute. Oh, sodium is going. I'm going to follow sodium too. If what will follow sodium and then your urine osmolality is so dilute because it's not concentrated because the cell that's supposed to be doing the job basically is already dead and they're walking out. All right. So usually, what are those? Those are the epithelial cells. Don't forget, the epithelial cells are the tubular cells inside your tubules. Well, how do we fix this? Now that we know the cells are dead and everything is what slouching off, your B and creatinine what is elevated. And all of this is explaining what your diagnosis is. What do we do? The cells are dead. I mean, if the cells are dead, how am I going to treat it? Treatment. So, of acute tubular necrosis. Well, got some bad news. There's no therapy for acute tubular necrosis because the tissues are dead. Because 
we can't really reverse the renal failure at this point because the tissues we try to solve is like having myocardial ischemia to myocardial infarction. If you're still ischemic, we might be able to save the tissue, but when the tissue is dead, mm, can bring them back from the grave. So there's really not much we can do. We can fix the underlying problem by doing what? If you're an aminoglycoside, stop the aminoglycoside, right? Because that's what's toxic to your kidneys, right? If you're taking amphotericin B, stop, don't take it anymore. Well, if you're still what? Hypoperfusing your kidney, we can give you hydration. But at this point of the game, you know what? It's not really gonna do much good other than maybe salvage the rest of the tissues that's not dead yet. So, if, if they've lost all the tubules in that, inside their kidneys, guess what? We just lost the entire sink. We can't filter anything anymore. You're going to have to go on dialysis. If they go into what? Severe renal failure. If they go into severe renal failure at that point, then you're going to have to go to dialysis. Since your sink doesn't work anymore, we're going to have to bring in a new sink, which is a machine. All right? And that's the end of acute tubular necrosis. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.